Hello everybody, welcome back for another Q&A video. I hope that you are all doing well and that you are all having a great day. As always, this must be said. The opinions expressed in this video are my own and should not under any circumstances be taken as legal, tax, and or investment advice. Also, on another side note, a lot of people have been telling me not to show names and or email addresses in the video. I do not know how to do this. I uh, This is kind of how the format is. It also says in the link in the description, if you are trying to email me, your name and email will also be shown. I have seen a couple of other uh, people have sent me stuff and they have written at the very bottom of the email. Don't show the email. Don't show my name. I can't really help you or get around that uh, so please be aware if you are sending me something people will be able to see everything that or more or less everything that you have written in the email and that's just how the q a videos work anyway without further ado let's jump right into it this one says thank you for your videos not a problem a while back you posted a video titled something like invest 1000 in and make a million which i listened to a few times and then took the plunge and began trading on binance I actually did make a good amount of profit over a one month period as I was making about 20 trades a day, but then the moat market dived and I had to reduce my trades. You said you sometimes mention the fact that the market will become more stable in the future with one to 2% volatility at most. So I'm just thinking trading will become less profitable. Would you agree or what is your opinion on that? Also, do you have experience on views or on trading bots which can be subscribed to? They claim to work, but I'm very skeptical about them when it comes to... Okay, so the entire idea of the crypto market potentially having a 1-2% volatility uh, per day or per week comes from a world where crypto is king like bitcoin has officially taken over everything we use crypto in our daily lives the apps that we use use crypto when we swipe a card we're paying an xrp this is kind of where the idea comes from it's when we have an enormous amount of mass uh, adoption this is when the market will almost cease to be volatile a lot of uh major bitcoin proponents have said that within the next 10 years Bitcoin will have will have become so stable that we will be able to use it as a daily currency simply because the price will n almost never move. This also once again enters us into a world where everyone is transacting in Bitcoin. Uh, the Bitcoin reward has been cut in half multiple times at that point, and no one is selling. Uh, as far as like you know, people are holding, if you will, but everything can be transacted in cryptocurrency. So this is. I mean, this isn't any time soon. The idea is within the next five years. A lot of people think because of the lack of volatility that we actually have now in Bitcoin's price that we're already there. We're not there. Everything is being manipulated and pushed up to a certain level so that they can kind of keep it this way. I believe that it's because they're trying to wait uh, for the U.S. regulators and everything else that encompasses it. Uh, but this is this entire one percent, one two percent of volatility at most is typically seen as like during an entire week or an entire month where the market will maybe move that month but this is also when we have uh not you know 300 million people transacting in one currency when we have billions of people using that one currency as a method of payment or whatever other people were trying to do with that money this is where that number comes in so for now if you are a trader you uh, more or less have nothing to really worry about as far as like the hyper stability in the market uh yeah, so obviously at that point it would become less profitable because prices aren't really moving. But hopefully in around four to five years, you are already rich from cryptocurrency. So you won't even have to worry about the volatility and all of that. Um, also, you, do you, do you uh, have experience or views on trading bots, which can um, be subscribed to? So a couple of, I want to say a year, year and a half ago, I thought about getting into trading bots. I actually did. I mean, they seem like a very good idea, and I tried to get into them, and I checked out many other YouTubers. I don't even know if they're still active. I'm pretty sure you can find videos on them using it. Uh, but there were no a number of YouTubers who were talking about trading bots and how they liked them, and like there were certain like uh, set things that you could click, and you can make them uh more volatile or rather like more risky or less risky and people were saying that they were getting you know one percent back on their trades or two percent back on their trades some people were saying they were getting around 14 percent i ended up not using any of them uh complete honesty simply because i didn't see a how do i say this uh i trusted myself more to do trades than i did the actual machine 
uh, simply because a lot of people were reporting. If you looked at their videos and you looked about a month and a half later, they're reporting, yeah, you know, great, things are great, things are awesome, things are so and so. But the moment the market went down, the machine wasn't able to actually tell that the market was going down. I guess the AI wasn't as perfect as uh, the companies who were selling it would have liked to portray it to be. And people were, uh, they had like sell orders for whatever kind of money they were using. The one I was watching, he had a sell order for like 15,000 and the computer got it wrong and he ended up losing tons of money. And he was, you know, he had a couple of videos where he just looked really down because uh, in the beginning, everything was great. Everything was wonderful. The, the computer was doing exactly as it should have. And then at the very end, it was not making the money that he thought it should have been making or rather uh, there, there, I think there are three major crypto trading bot services out there. First of all, I thought the bots were kind of expensive. That's just me. Uh, maybe it was when Bitcoin's price was a bit higher. Maybe the, you know, the number in comparison just seemed a bit off to me. Uh, and even I saw some free ones as well. And those didn't look too nice, at least to me. And the ones that you had to pay for, the ones that people said that they were making profits from, eventually there were a lot of days. It, it, it could, I mean, maybe the AI just didn't anticipate the hyper bear market that we have right now. But I, me, myself have stayed away from them simply because I don't trust them. AI as we have it right now isn't superior to humans and it is bound to make a lot of mistakes. And I would rather myself lose a thousand dollars or euros trading than having a machine lose it for me because I would get upset with the machine and I can't strangle the machine. Uh, that's kind of how I feel about it. I, I am also skeptical about them. Like I said, uh, so I personally do not use them, but I know a lot of other people are definitely into them. The same exact thing with the stock market. It's like a very big thing. People just want robots to kind of do everything. And uh, yeah, I trust myself to look at the market a bit more. I'd rather sit in front of a computer for two hours, three hours a day and do my six, seven, eight trades than uh, having a robot do it for me and then lose money. I'd rather lose the money on my own and know that I made a mistake so that I can learn from it because uh, I can't teach the computer to learn from its mistakes and it ends up losing money for me again. Not something that I want. Next one says, love your channel. Thank you very much. One of the few to also have a lighthearted space uh, side to the space. Uh, I was talking to my wife about Bitcoin being adopted as a currency by a country. And she asked how this would happen if there is a limited supply. I could not answer. So perhaps you could. Is there enough Bitcoin for it to be adopted worldwide eventually? So bear with me on this one. I actually had to find a website where I was actually be able to uh, type text into. Uh, so I hope that I'm actually able to answer your question. So what it comes down to this, for those who are listening, there are 21 million Bitcoin that will ever be created, the maximum. If Bitcoin hits 100, this is in the assumption that Bitcoin will one day hit the $100 million. This is where... Uh, the theory of how everyone will be able to use it or transact in it makes the most sense. 21 million Bitcoin max. If Bitcoin hits $100 million per Bitcoin, this of course means that one BTC is $100 million, obviously. This also means that just having 0 0.10 Bitcoin would be $10 million. That is one decimal place over from the $100 million. Therefore, in theory... 210 million people on earth would be able to have 0 0.10 Bitcoin as if it is 21 million and everyone has one that only leaves space for 21 million people on earth to be able to have Bitcoin or rather a whole Bitcoin. So the more fractions of Bitcoin that there are as Bitcoin can be fractionalized, the more people that can own it, the more people in the world that will be able to transact in it. So here's where it gets really interesting. However, if Bitcoin is $100 million per coin, this also means that if each person had just 0.01 Bitcoin, which would be $1 million, there would be enough for 2.1 billion people on earth to have $1 million. That is 0.01 of a Bitcoin, which already leads us to one fourth of the global population that we have right now would be able to transact in Bitcoin, just having 0.01 Bitcoin, meaning that one Bitcoin is worth $1 million, meaning in theory, in a perfect world, uh, that at least all the people above the age of 25, just to kind of cut down the numbers, uh, would be a millionaire. Which also leads us to, if each person on earth had 0 0.0025, so one fourth of the 0 01 Bitcoin, this would be quarter of a million dollars per person. So 0 0.001, which is one decimal place over from this one would be enough for 21 billion people on earth to each have $100,000 worth of Bitcoin. But at this point, we actually wouldn't be trans uh, rather uh, saying prices anymore in 
dollars or euros and yen or anything else like that because the idea is is that one bit once once bitcoin hits a million dollars uh the world is then using bitcoin and 100 million dollars means that everything is denominated in bitcoin every single thing that we buy or sell or store anything that we are looking into we can walk into a shop and they may have you know uh the the, the antiquated prices for what it used to be in that country whatever but the price will still be in bitcoin there's actually a lot of european countries when you travel around they still have the old currency like if you're going around paris sometimes they will actually have the price of everything in their former currency before they had to europe before they had to europe before they had the euro as a way to what's it called give people who are used to that currency an idea of exactly how much they're spending so there's definitely the possibility of you seeing something that says oh this is you know 45 dollars, but it's still denominated in satoshi moving further ahead bitcoin time traveler this uh leads us to the world where everything is you know, Bitcoin has completely taken over. One Bitcoin is $100 million. If, so the easiest way to kind of think about this, and I've really, as I was looking at it, I said, I thought it was genius. And I feel like Satoshi is the Bitcoin time traveler. If one Bitcoin is $100 million, this would mean that 0.10 Bitcoin, uh, as the uh, Satoshis end up working out, is actually $10 million. I don't know if you can see the commas right here. This mean, like this, this is, this is it mathematically. Uh, if you dropped it, dropped one zero, 0 0.10 was still equal $10 million, but it fits perfectly into the Satoshis. 0 0.01 is $1 million and it fits perfectly in, into the Satoshis, which then means, I don't know if Satoshi was planning on this or if someone else did it. Uh, Bitcoin is then logically meant to be worth $100 million per coin so that everyone could have 0 0.01 of a Bitcoin and therefore have a million dollars from it. Um, ultimately, meaning if we have a world where one Bitcoin is $100 million, then one Satoshi equals $1 as, I mean, you can see the numbers. It's kind of weird when you really think about it. Like it kind of, uh, it makes sense, but it's still really weird. Uh, this would mean that, for instance, let's say we enter a world where one Bitcoin is $100 million. And let's say if you're mining crypto right now, or like you're mining Bitcoin right now, and let's say every day you were making, let's say like 800 Satoshis. If Bitcoin becomes $100 million, this means you're making $800 every single day from mining cryptocurrencies. Oh, th th this is, of course, you know, in a strange parallel universe where Bitcoin ends up hitting $100 million. Uh, but it's very interesting to think uh, a lot of people, remember I told you guys before, there are a lot of people who are very discouraged when it came to uh, mining cryptocurrencies because, uh, especially many years ago, if you watch the old videos, people were talking like, yeah, I'm only getting 0 0.1 Bitcoin a day. It's just not worth it. I'm only getting about $10, $15. You know, I'm going to stop my mining operations. And you look at where we are now and you're like, oh, I'd love to have 0 0.10 of a Bitcoin. That would be absolutely wonderful. Uh, so I'm sorry for uh, going off on a tangent like I always do. Uh, the point is, yes, it is entirely possible. And the more you look at it, the stranger it gets because this means that the Satoshi amount is actually there on purpose, uh, meaning that 0 .1, 0 0.01 Bitcoin is worth or would be worth $1 million. Uh, this is why uh, there are a lot of people who are advocates. You know, there are people who are advocates for the you know, have one whole Bitcoin because this would be pretty nice to have. But realistically, uh, this is why I have the Bitcoin time traveler he thing here, uh, where the guy and the, the who wrote it, he said that even having 0 0.01 Bitcoin was enough to last you for the rest of your life. And this is why if you had that now in this time, as you're listening to this video right now, he says in the future, you are rich and you are rich enough to actually move to one of the rich people farms or whatever they end up calling them. Long story short, I hope this all made sense. I was doing it and my mind was kind of blown because the numbers all uh, fit into Bitcoin having to be worth $100 million per coin for people to be able to uh, have it and transact in it. But yes, it is entirely possible and it gets us to the point if everyone has just 0 0.01, this is 2.1 billion people. And even if you have a quarter of that, 21 billion people on earth would be able to have $100,000. We don't even have 9 billion people on this planet. So this also leads us to a future where if things continued in Bitcoin, everyone would be able to have a fraction of a Bitcoin. Uh, but we all know that there are many people on earth uh, who have a lot of Bitcoin. Uh, think of how rich certain people will become. Imagine if Bitcoin hits 100 million per coin. Uh, some of the people who out there even have like a thousand Bitcoin. Think of how rich they're going to become and think of a certain uh, group of people 
who've announced that they have like 100,000 Bitcoin. They would be the richest people probably in the entire galaxy. So hope I answered your question. <laughs> Sorry, it was a bit of a, a, a tangent there, but you kind of get the point. So you can definitely uh, tell your wife, yes, it's possible. Uh, Bitcoin's going to rule the world. I don't know exactly how you feel about Bitcoin, but uh, it's definitely possible. Next up says, really enjoy your videos. Thank you very much. Has been great to watch and listen to you over the changes over the past year. Not a problem. The question I have is, will over-the-counter sales impact the price of a coin or asset if it is not trading through an exchange? The way I think about it is that if it's not recorded as a sale on an exchange, it will not affect the price. However, with the passing of time, will it then be apparent that there are less circulating available coins and this will drive the price up anyways? Maybe you could explain the over-the-counter process. Uh, you have it 100% correct. Exactly what you just said is exactly what we've been experiencing over the last couple of months. A lot of people have been saying, uh, first of all, as the crypto market has gone down, we've seen an 8x fold in the amount of people who've gotten into the cryptocurrency space. And a lot of people have been wondering, they said, it's kind of weird that we know, I mean, logically, if we have eight times as many people in the cryptocurrency space, and all these people are getting into crypto, shouldn't prices have moved? And then we had all this news from Coindesk and not Bittrex and uh, Gemini Exchange and all the other ones that a lot of people are buying cryptocurrencies over the counter. This does not touch their exchange or rather it goes from simply from a wallet to a wallet and therefore it is not recorded on the exchange. And this is why we have a lot of people who believe that a lot of the richest people in the world right now are buying up huge amounts of cryptocurrencies. It's not being recorded on the exchange. And I've said this for quite a long time. I told you guys that we have we have confirmation. We know this. That a large amount of Bitcoin is lost forever. We know a lot of people have had their Bitcoin on old computers. They threw the computers away. They lost their private keys. Have no way of getting their their crypt, uh, crypto back, which has to be horrible to have ten thousand Bitcoin on the computer and you can never touch it again. The point is, all these people have been buying up tons of crypto over the last couple of months. It has not been touching the exchanges, or rather, has not been recorded on the uh, exchange itself. This is why I don't know if you realize. A couple of weeks ago, we had news. I think people have been buying like. 50 60 million dollars worth of xrp like every other day and it's showing on the xrp ledger um and uh alex cobb has been seeing this and this is why it's so interesting because it doesn't get recorded on coin market cap because it's happening over the counter so we know that people are buying a massive amount of this it's not being recorded but what's going to end up happening is is that people will eventually realize that there aren't as many circulating coins as people think that there are as we've lost a huge amount of bitcoin already the, uh, the amount of rich people who've gotten into the cryptocurrency market, them buying up all this crypto at some point, I don't know when it's going to happen, people will start realizing that all the crypto that should have been on the other exchanges is no longer there and there's a huge shortage that's actually going on. And should this then coincide with a bull run or something like that, the price of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are expected to go absolutely insane because... If there's less Bitcoin, the Bitcoin rewards gets cut in half and we have more people getting into the cryptocurrency space than we even have right now who are just trying to buy up Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. This is where we get that price prediction of Bitcoin hitting $100,000 in 2019. Oh, it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Uh, but you're definitely correct. It has no uh, uh, no influence on the exchange. Like you, We don't see the prices that are actually happening. It could be from a vault that the uh, that Coinbase has somewhere in the back and they simply just transact. Someone transfers them the money as far as like through their normal bank. Here's $50 million and they send them the equivalent amount of Bitcoin or cryptocurrency or Litecoin, whatever they're buying from that thing at that exact time. But it's not shown on the exchange. And this is why it is so interesting because it makes us wonder who exactly is buying up all the crypto and how much has been bought up and how much will this affect the market when people realize that there's not as much crypto as they think floating around out there. A lot of people think that when they see the number for the circulating supply, that that is how much crypto is out there. And it's not. A lot of it is hidden away inside of bank accounts all around the world, inside of Swiss bank accounts, maybe inside of mountains. Who knows where it is, but there's not as much crypto out there as people like to tell themselves or that they like to think. So this one confused me a tiny bit, so I'm going to try and stick with it. Uh, this one says, below are three bags of crypto I've put together, which I've stored on three Ledger Nanos. Each box or bag will be locked away and cannot be accessed until October 2023. You have to pick one of the three ledgers today. You will. You can only choose one ledger. Which one would you pick? Uh, which one would be worth the most in 2023? Would you pick up the bag of XRP, the bag of Bitcoin, or the one, the dice roll with the uh, riskier mixed bag of, alt, of altcoins? I'm going to assume uh, you mean by pick. I'm going to assume you don't mean like put away or store for you. 
Uh, rather, which one would I find the most enticing that I would want for myself? That's kind of how I think I got this. I don't think you're if they're, if they're going to be put away until 2023, I don't think you're asking me to choose which one I want to put away first because I assume they're all happening simultaneously. Only choose one ledger. Uh, so these are the three. Uh, ledger one has three Bitcoin. Okay. It's, ledger two has 10,000 XRP. And Ledger 3 has a slew of altcoins, total value of around $19,000 at this point. Uh, which one would be... Okay. I don't know. Which one would I pick? This is actually... You guys keep giving me very mean questions because you know I want to choose XRP. Uh, but if we end up hitting a, a world in 2021 where a Bitcoin is worth a million dollars... Well, I mean, I feel like... I don't know. Mm. XRP would have to be $100 for this to be a million dollars. And Bitcoin, I could definitely see that happening. Bitcoin in 2021 would have to hit, a, I guess that would be $3 million. Hmm. To be fair, this is also four times this value right here. So that's not really, I don't know. Uh, or the, okay. I like Omizi Go. I love EOS. I have... I think Ethereum is going to do very well. I see a future for Litecoin. I see a future for Stellar. I think Cardano. These are all very good coins. My gosh. Uh, Golem, I have very high hopes for. Bat is going to be used. I like Salt a lot. Funfair, I think, is very cool. VeChain, I'm not too well versed on. And Kin, that's crazy. That 10 million Kin is only $62. Uh, this is quite difficult. And I want to tell you what I'm going to choose and what I would choose in an alternate universe just because I think that is... Uh, the most fair you guys know i mean come on man that's not this is this isn't fair because i'm looking at the current value of it and even if xrp does hit 100 that's a million but this is also then three million should bitcoin hit a million dollars per coin in the, my current life i'm gonna have to choose xrp uh i have a love love relationship with xrp there's nothing that can stop that at least at the moment Unless something detrimental happens to the project. In a parallel universe, I would, I'm not even joking, I think I would flip a coin between these two. Uh, the prospect of having three Bitcoin, especially the prospect of having a, a Bitcoin that could hit $100 million and then having three of them. That sounds like a very nice life. But also, I think these coins are definitely going to make it. Uh, while I don't, hmm. It leads me to like, do I think they can also uh, reach the gains of Bitcoin? See, it's 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 very scary and it's a very weird idea because you kind of sit there and you think the altcoins that I'm invested in, uh, will they? Well, okay, I put it this way: in the past, we've seen altcoins uh, outpace Bitcoin as far as like gains. Uh, I would choose this one. I think I would choose this one. And it makes me hurt inside because I really feel like I should be choosing the three Bitcoin simply because it's Bitcoin and having three whole Bitcoin. That is interesting already in itself. In this world right now, I would choose XRP just because it's XRP. I kind of wish it said like 40,000 XRP. So like it matched this this value. I would That would be an instant choice. Uh, but and yeah, I would flip a coin and I would hope that it would land on three Bitcoin. Uh, but I would be satisfied if it actually hit uh, ledger number three. I hope I answered your question. I saw it and I was like, I don't really understand what he's saying, but I'm going to assume that this is uh, uh, what this person means. So I hope I got it correct. <laughs> uh, it was fun either way. Uh, people keep sending me very like mean, uh, like what would you choose type things or like 10,000 into one coin. And it makes my brain melt because I... I really, it's so difficult. Like there, there's so many coins, like just because I uh, like XRP doesn't mean that I like Bitcoin any less. Uh, and the fact that I have to choose between the two, this is why I said, if, if this was four times as much and they matched the total value, it would be XRP in a second. Uh, but because this is higher and I potentially has higher prospects, that's that's $300 million. I mean, that's, that's a lot of money to make in, uh, what is it? People are saying by like 2030, we could hit a hundred million. Anyway, moving on from this, uh, kind of interesting. Thank you very much for your question and or like saw like quiz. Uh, it was torturously fun, I guess. Next one says, thanks for being so accessible. I try and answering our questions. My opinion, 
Kraken and Binance are going to butt heads with U.S. regulators, the NY, New York, and SEC. Uh, Coinbase is not giving access to new coins because they want to be the most aligned with regulators and be ready when the United States regulators start clearing house and demand the securities in mass not be available in the United States. Customers via exchanges like Binance. This is why they do stuff that has a community like why they have made it easier for crypto companies to list with them should the company fight and meet compliance and then want to be listed in the United States. I've also seen a massive push for by coins to drop the current association to appease regulators. Bitcoin as just a store of value and others stressing that they are not that they are just digital assets. Anyway, my questions are how high of a probability do you see this happening? I.e., should I consider buying as much coins that are listed only on Binance now and hold them knowing that they have no liquidity for the time being as a U.S. person? Uh, two says if there were to if this were to happen, do you see Binance saying no U.S. customers like Bitfinex did? Very interesting that you asked that. Do you see the SEC sneaking into the whole accredited investor BS into the remaining exchanges exclusively in the U.S.? Uh, so I'm going to try. Okay, the first one. How high the probability do you see that this happening? I should I that is that is questionable. I'm going to mix number one and two together. I don't know if you saw my last video, like my weekend uh, news type thing. Uh, I am fortunate to know some people who actually work for Binance. And I know a couple of other people who work for other crypto exchanges. And a lot of the, the sentiment right now is that we are not going to touch the U.S. simply because of everything that's actually happening right now. Uh, do I see a future where Binance says no U.S. customers? If the U.S. does not get it together, that's going to happen. It's it, it's almost a uh, uh, a definite at this point. Same exact thing with Kraken. Same exact thing with a, a number of other places. Uh, this is why I think uh, Bittrex, Gemini, and uh, Coinbase are kind of uh, taking the charge for some reason in the United States. I think because other ones, I'm pretty sure, I can only imagine that there are at least 15 other crypto exchanges who have been completely shut down or shot down uh, by the SEC or the CFTC telling them, no, you cannot launch because of one, two, three. Uh, I can definitely see this happening, and I think it's moving closer. If the U.S. doesn't give any type of regulation, this is the 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 CEO of Binance stated a couple days ago. He was like, "Yeah, we're not really concerned about expanding into the U.S. because the the we make more money on the rest of the world." That is a huge indicator of what could be uh, coming. Uh, consider buying as many coins listed on Coinbase now and holding them. They made a little bit. I don't know. I wouldn't do that. Uh, I would. I don't want to say wait and see because that's a that's a wasted money opportunity. Uh, just, I don't know. I, I can't really give you an answer. I can't tell you to buy things on Binance that may or may not be listed or available in the United States where I assume that you live. Because if they aren't then listed, if they aren't listed by Coinbase or Bittrex or something else, and you cannot then transfer these coins over that you got from Binance a year ago into another exchange and it doesn't have the liquidity and people aren't using it, uh, that could be detrimental for your wallet. Uh, therefore, I personally would not recommend that. It's a very, uh, the entire US situation right now is causing a lot of strife in crypto, uh, not even just within the US, but also around the world because everyone's waiting for their answer, but also it's causing a lot of confusion. And you, you, I don't know if you noticed earlier this year, we had a lot of news that a lot of crypto exchanges were like, okay, well, we're leaving the States and they, they opened up in, in Malta or in South America or in other places around Europe or in Switzerland because everyone's getting tired of what's happening there. Uh, do you see the SEC sneaking into the whole accredited investor BS and the remaining exchange exclusive? Say yes and no. I could see if the SEC or the US clamps down and I mean heavily on the cryptocurrency space, I could see them doing exactly what they're doing in Russia as in uh, only the richest of the rich are able to then deal in cryptocurrencies. On the other side, I feel like there are enough people, uh, the people who are going to Capitol Hill and are talking to the SEC and the CFTC, telling them to hurry up with the regulations. I think that they understand that uh, retail investors, i.e. normal people, uh, are also a, I want to say an integral part of the space, whether many people believe that or not. Uh, I could I could definitely see some type of dystopia where the SEC announces that they don't think that crypto is safe and therefore only uh, accredited investors or really rich investors who have over $50 million are able to get into the cryptocurrency space, therefore leaving everyone out. Uh, but it seems a bit unlikely that it would happen. If they do that, that is, uh, the, the, what's the phrase? Like the, the final nail in the coffin, they're, they're completely done. Like the US is then completely done. 
I would hope or assume that they would not be uh, that short-sighted to do something as detrimental as that because that would ruin uh, the cryptocurrency space in the United States completely. Next one says, hello, do you think it's possible for another company such as Visa or MasterCard to create an in-house XRP-like service that would render XRP meaningless? I really hope XRP succeeds and I'm not a hater. <laughs> Thank you for your response. Uh, it's, how do I say this? Everything is possible. Everything can happen. Something bad can happen to this. Something bad can happen to that. Do I think it is possible right now? No. Why? Because I think the, uh, like I've said before, I think the Ripple team has been very smart in what they did and who they decided to partner with first. Uh, we had news of Ripple, par Ripple partnerships for at least two and a half, two, three years now, something like that. And who they've managed to acquire uh, was during a time where other companies thought that crypto was a farce. Crypto is completely fake. Crypto is not a thing. Crypto is never going to make it. And now these same exact companies and institutions are trying to create their own blockchains. Whether they will be successful, I'm going to say a very strong maybe not. That's not to say that their blockchains won't be able to make it. Uh, but we had a similar question to this in the last video. Now that I think about it as well, when it came to like a why not use a stablecoin and stuff like that. I definitely see other companies or organizations trying to compete with Ripple and trying to make their own blockchain. I do not. I, I think at this point, uh, like I mentioned, uh, when you've partnered with 50 central banks, uh, that holds a lot more weight than just Visa or MasterCard. Uh, anything can happen. There could be a dystopian future where XRP and all crypto is rendered meaningless simply because we have Visa and MasterCard who have created their own cryptocurrencies and they force other companies to use them. But as it stands right now, Visa and MasterCard have very high fees. Same exact thing with Swift. And a lot of companies do not like them and they're trying to get away with them or rather away from them. And this is why we have, uh, this is why Ripple has made it so far. When you have the incentive that if you're sending a transaction and you only have to pay 0 0.0006 of an XRP, uh, that is a lot better. I think Visa and MasterCard charge like I think three to six percent or something like that per transaction, uh, and that's 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 absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I can definitely see them trying to create something, and other companies are definitely trying to create something as well because they're trying to uh, run a race that is almost finished and they're still at the starting line. Anything can happen, but as of now, I personally think crypto in general has already formed or solidified itself, and I think that Visa and MasterCard probably uh, don't have a real chance, at least in the next 10 years, of being dominant or as, as dominant as they are right now in the future. Next one says, thank you for all the videos. I try my best. Many people are into Ripple and XRP. I am too. I'm sure it will succeed very soon in the market they are in will make and have made. Companies work to provide a similar product of their own. Ripple has a big head start. Uh, but could you speak of some of the potential negative aspects? What could give in the way of Ripple? Uh, what could drive the price of the token to drop once X Rapid uses made public? Let's try not to fall into a conf confirmation bias and assess the potential risks. Sorry if there are mistakes. English is not my native language. That's really weird because your English is perfect. <laughs> I don't know if you know that or not. Uh, you formed sentences that I know certain English speakers aren't actually able to uh, form. <laughs> uh, so when it comes to, let's see, what could get in the way of Ripple? Regulators. And as of now, regulators are on their side. Everyone seems to be... Uh, I don't want to say in Ripple's pockets, but uh, they have made sure that they have the right people on their side. Uh, what could get in their way, though? Bitcoin? Uh, computer failure? System collapse? Solar solar flares? Knocking out the, the infrastructure of, of society? Uh... Not to say that there aren't many things, but I think that Ripple has solidified themselves. And unless another cryptocurrency really comes forward and they're like, hey, we're just as compliant, we're just as this, and they find a way to get the couple hundred, uh, what's it called, like partnerships and stuff like that, there's not much. Like it would just be regulators. It would have to be regulators. Uh, what could drive the price of the token to drop once X Rapid uh, use is made public? <sighs> If some major partnerships that they had in the pipeline actually aren't uh, partnerships, or if we have a tremendous, like another bear market. Once X Rapid gets launched, 
uh, this is going to be the beginning of the solidification of XRP as a major cryptocurrency, as it is, will rather than be the only coin uh, that has an actual use case, a hyper use case, or rather use case that is being used on a daily or minute by minute basis. Uh, store of value is not a use case, especially if you were meant to be a payment method for the entire world. Uh, that's just one thing that I have to say. Uh, the price of to drop once X rapid is used made public. Uh, it would have to be a crazy bear market. There would have to be a like a banking crisis where all the banking computers shut down. I tried to explain before in another video. XRP is still going to be used, or rather, to send payments back and forth. Like people don't stop sending money just because uh, banks are in trouble. Like people have to transact in money, people have to take out money, people have to pay for things in money. Uh, so if XRP is being used, especially for cross-border payments or even uh, uh, domestic payments, it's not like not much. We would need like Bitcoin to take over the world. We would need like someone would have to destroy X Rapid, or like someone would have to find a hole in the in the big in the in the XRP blockchain and tear it apart. Like once, I hope you get what I'm saying. Like not many things at this point. They've they've made Ripple has been so intelligent in their movements, and this is why it caught everyone by surprise that the, that the the price is going up or where they are right now, uh, because they've been doing this over the last couple of years. They were getting these companies when other people were still skeptical on crypto. They they made sure that everyone knew that they were compliant uh, and that they were going to play by the rules. And this is why they've made it this far. I uh, think that was the last question. Your English is perfect. No need to worry about that at all. And I hope I answered your question. Uh, people have asked me before, do I see Ripple slash XRP having a competitor in the near future? Not many. Not many coins are going after the market that they're going for. Ethereum is not going after the market that XRP is going for. Bitcoin, as of now, is a store of value and or digital gold. They're not going after the same exact thing. The other coins who have either forked off of XRP or are claiming that they are as quick or better or institutions, so and so and so, they don't have the partners that Ripple has. And the moment another coin comes out of the woodworks and say that they are partnered with 51 central banks and that they have 250 banking partnerships, I would say, okay, that's definitely something that could make it. But Ripple, more or less, uh, there's a there's a lot of reasons why you see, I don't know if you've seen like the conspiracy theory uh, videos as far as like uh, Ripple and XRP eventually being the number one coin. There's a reason why you see that is because their partnerships and, and who they've solidified themselves with, like when they have the International Monetary Fund talking at their events, they have people from the SEC on their side and they have other people from uh, other money makers, the people who make monetary policies or people who print money are on their team as well. Uh, it's kind of uh, solidified them. And I have a strong feeling uh, if, if X Rapid does well for a year, I think Ripple and XRP will be completely solidified in the cryptocurrency space. If XRP, if X Rapid does not work out the way that we think in a year, then we can have a whole bunch of companies talking about that they're retracting and moving away from Ripple a tiny bit because of you know blah 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 blah. Uh, but if X Rapid works, uh, that's it. That's the uh, that's the confirmation that everyone has been waiting for for the last couple of years. Last question says, "Love your work, buddy. Thank you very much." I'll try to keep it short. When someone buys Bitcoin with fiat through Coinbase, where do or where does Coinbase buy the coins? Do they purchase from exchanges? Hence, are they the reason the price keeps dipping back to the stable $6,500 level? Uh, also, on the Mt. Gox situation, if they sell off coins at a large amount, someone has to buy them. So is that not good? When people get their money back from the scandal, <clears throat> will it be in dollars or Bitcoin? If it's in dollars, I'd expect some of these people buying back into Bitcoin. Hence, these Mt. Gox dips are yet to be corrected. But if they get their Bitcoin, do you think they will keep it or sell off or more them into or move them into altcoins? Uh, see ya. So uh, blah, 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 blah. Where's the first question? Do, 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 do. So when Coinbase, uh, when people, someone buys Bitcoin with fiat through Coinbase, where does Coinbase buy the coins? Coinbase has bought the coins themselves many, many moons ago, or they have owned the coins themselves. And they're, this is what they're transacting and selling in back and forth. Uh, they don't get it from another exchange per se. Like Coinbase is the exchange. Like they are the, they are the gatekeeper to the Bitcoin that they already hold. They are one of the larger uh, wallets 
who are holding uh, Bitcoin. They get it from themselves or rather they have purchased them many, many moons ago. This is why I said the people who are run uh, Gemini and Coinbase have been in Bitcoin for so long that they actually got Bitcoin when it was around like a dollar, maybe ten dollars. And this is why they have so much and this is why they have become so large. Hence, are they the reason why the price keeps dipping back to the stable? Nope, they're not the reason. That has to do with, uh, I mean, it could be. Let, let me not uh, uh, even say that out loud. We know that the, the market is being manipulated. Or rather, Bitcoin's price is constantly being held down. There's never in the history of Bitcoin has Bitcoin's price moved completely sideways nonstop every single day. You may see certain spikes like this, and then it continues going sideways. Uh, it is believed that this is being done by whales or people with very large Bitcoin amounts who have figured out mathematically, whether it be from bots or any other way, or even just themselves like with simple math, figuring out exactly how much they have to buy or sell in order to keep Bitcoin at this level right now. This is why it's very odd because we'll see Bitcoin shoot up three, $400 and everyone gets really excited and then it continues, can go sideways for days and weeks and weeks and weeks. This is all happening because of manipulation. I don't think that Coinbase is directly affected uh, as far as keeping the price at the $6,500 level. That's not to say that they are not doing it, that they are not responsible for this, but the idea is, or rather what people think is that it's being manipulated by whales. The Mount Gox situation, if they sell off a, sell off coins in a large amount because someone has to buy them, is this not good? No. Uh, so when we've seen before in the past, if someone has moved a wallet if someone had 15,000, 25,000, 30,000 Bitcoin and someone has moved those coins anywhere on the on the network, we have people who are tracing and tracking uh, crypto wallets and they make this news public and everyone starts to panic because if you have 30,000 Bitcoin times 6,500 per Bitcoin, that's a lot of money. And because there's a lack of liquidity, i.e. Uh, money that's actively moving through the network on any given day, if someone sells off that many Bitcoin, this will cause the price of Bitcoin to drop. And as of now, we know that the holder or the trustee of bit of uh, Mt. Gox is holding, I think, 130,000 Bitcoin left. So if he sells or rather if there was a sell off of 130,000 Bitcoin at 6,500 uh, per coin, a lot of people were saying before this won't have a huge effect. The, the market moves when people move Bitcoin between wallets. If someone sold 130,000 Bitcoin, the market of Bitcoin's price would probably see a huge nosedive. And this is detrimental because the rest of the market is tied to the price of Bitcoin. And this is not good for the rest of the market. This is why I keep saying we need to find that this is supposed to happen around like May or something like that of next year. Uh, other coins need to find a use case or your coins are going to be slammed down in value by the Bitcoin sell off. So is this not good? And no, it's not good. Will people, when people get their money back from the scandal, will it be in dollars or Bitcoin? Uh, so a lot of people were disagreeing with me and I'm glad the internet exists because I was able to find this information. Uh, it says right here about the creditors paying people back in cryptocurrencies. The policy stated in June that it would be appropriate to repay creditors who deposited Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash with Mt. Gox, the same cryptocurrencies instead of cash. In the latest update, the lawyers further asserted, asserted that it would be desirable that those Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash be sent to exchanges in which many creditors have accounts or can open accounts more easily. What this comes down to is, as of now, the way that it seems from the information that we've had from these people in August, which was about a month and a half, give or take a go, is that they will not be paid out in cash. The creditor is not going to be cashing out the Bitcoin himself. Uh, they're trying to see if the people who actually um, should be getting the money, uh, rather the people who claim that they lost Bitcoin and subsequently also getting back Bitcoin cash because of the fork, that if you have an exchange account, this cryptocurrency or the amount of Bitcoin that you have will simply be sent to the exchanges itself. So they will not be paid out in cash, meaning he will not be able to dump it and crash the price. But the problem is, is that these people who are also getting their stuff back will probably be able to crash the Bitcoin price. Uh, as far as them keeping or selling it, I told you guys before, my thought is, and I'm pretty sure, and I'm going to say this uh, this way, th think of it this way. Let's say you got into Bitcoin. You found out what Bitcoin was in 2009, 2010. You, you were lucky enough. You know, you, someone gave you $1,000 and you got 1,000 Bitcoin uh, at a dollar each. You know, you went on your way. You went on vacation. You came back home. Mountain Gox happened. Oh my gosh, I lost all my money in the last, what is that, eight years? You've been struggling. Your bills haven't been that great. Things aren't that wonderful. And 
you realized one day you sat there and you're like, I have millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin. I'm so sad that I lost it. And then you got a letter in the mail or something online that said, we are going to refund you back your Bitcoin. And you're also going to receive an equal amount of Bitcoin cash because of the hard fork. Therefore, at least at the present day, if you had a thousand Bitcoin because you got them for one dollar each, you will be receiving six point five million dollars to the cryptocurrency exchange of your choice. What would you do? I don't me personally. Uh, not only would I have resentment for Bitcoin in the cryptocurrency space because I put my faith in this website that lost me money, uh, millions of dollars that I thought I would never get back again. The elatement and the joy that I would have. Someone telling me that next year, sometime, I think next spring or something like that, that you are going to receive. Uh, imagine if Bitcoin's price goes up to ten, fifteen thousand dollars a coin. And someone tells you, you are going to receive anywhere from 6.5 to $15 million back on a cryptocurrency exchange, you would sell. Uh, I think we have gotten to the mentality of not selling because we understand or we see a bit of what the future of Bitcoin is going to be like. When this whole event happens, it is going to be a very tense moment for people who are in the cryptocurrency space. This is why I keep repeating your coin has to now, now, now show that you have a use case. This is why I'm so bullish on XRP because when X rapid is activated, Bitcoin and XRP will decouple from each other as the XRP price is expected to have its own movements because there is going to be billions of dollars flowing through its daily volume on a daily basis. Bitcoin, however, needs to have this same amount of volume, like someone needs to get it together and Bitcoin's price has to really have a proper bull market because when someone sells off or rather when someone is moving a wallet that has 130,000 Bitcoin inside of it and they're transferring that to thousands of people, thousands of people, thousands of people, and they see that the price of Bitcoin is $15,000, they are going to sell. I will tell you this right now. If I had not been into cryptocurrencies, if I am not where I am right now and understood the potential future of where uh, cryptocurrencies and or Bitcoin would go and someone gave me $15 million, I would at least sell off 90% of it. Not going to lie at all. And this is this is what's expected to happen. It's expected that people are going to get this money. They're going to sell it off. They're going to buy homes. They're going to go to the Bahamas and they're going to have fun with their money. And this will cause a price in the value of Bitcoin and also the other altcoins that have not decoupled and are following in Bitcoin's footsteps. Uh, so it's going to be a very interesting period. We still have time, more or less. January, February, March, April, May, uh, November, December, nine months until this actually ends up happening. So we have some time. Maybe the bull market will happen. Maybe Bitcoin will get itself together. Maybe everything will work out for the best, but as of now, the way things are looking, uh, this will be detrimental to the price of Bitcoin. Just how things goes, this is the market that we're in. We chose cryptocurrencies. Uh, crypto did not choose us. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, and or evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I hope it's absolutely wonderful. Thank you once again for watching and or listening. I hope I answered all of your questions. And please make sure once again, if you do not, I apologize, want your uh, name and or email inside of this video, uh, then there's probably no way, unless you make like a new mail. A lot of people have been making Proton mails. That's the one that I'm actually using right now. Uh, I thought it would pop up. Guess it didn't pop up. Uh, I'm using Proton Mail as I think it's like uh, they don't share your information or something like that. I think it's also encrypted back and forth so people can't read your actual emails. This is why it's kind of cool. See, end to end encrypted. It's actually kind of cool. So if you are looking to uh, be more secure in what you are doing, this is not a paid advertisement, by the way. I would definitely download Proton Mail. I do definitely recommend them. They are absolutely great. Thank you once again, and I will talk to you all soon. See you.